Lisa McVeigh Noland was abducted by a serial killer when she was just 17 years old. She was the only one of his victims that got away, and she even helped to catch him. The story was so incredible, it was made into a film called Believe Me, which has sparked new interest in the case here in the United States and around the world. And certainly a lot of interest from me, so we called her. And she joins me now. Lisa Nolan, it's really good to meet you. Um, first and foremost, I'm so glad I'm meeting you. I'm so glad you're alive. I'm so glad you grew up to be um, a law enforcement officer. So let's just start there. Uh, and secondly, have you seen the movie? And if so, it must have been unbearable for you to watch because it was unbearable for me to watch. First, thank you for having me on your show um, up until today. I didn't, I've never heard of your show, so I do apologize. Um, was it hard for me to watch? I'm going to say no. I was actually on set during the filming, um, helping basically directing the film. I, I wanted to get my story out there to educate others. Just because bad and horrific things can happen to a person doesn't mean you can't go on with your life and, and, and do good in the world and give back. So part of your work, it's it's great that, that you're working, you know, with middle school kids, your resource officer, you know, in middle school now. You've also worked with the, the sex crimes division as well um, with the same, you know, group of uh, the, the same law enforcement outfit that, that ended up tracking your, you know, your serial killer slash didn't kill you. However, I'm curious about how a police officer determines who's a runaway and who is missing. Because we had it happen up here this week. We had two kids who were gone for five days in Manhattan and the law enforcement officer said, we're just not comfortable with this one. They seem like runaways. This must be a really hard decision for you to make. Every day in law enforcement, you make a split second decision and that you come across I, you know, i.e. routine traffic stop, i.e. Uh, routine domestic violence. Um, when it comes to a runaway versus someone being kidnapped, there's, there's a lot of factors that have to weigh in to become something other than a runaway. Um, could the child have some mental dis, you know, disabilities, um, suicide note, et cetera? Um, for me, it's, all my life, I was subject to abuse. Um, so I know the signs of, you know, when a child's telling me the truth or lying, um, it's it's just it's obvious. It's more obvious for me, I guess. You know, you have to live and place yourself in my shoes, where I've been from. So it comes naturally to me, I believe. Uh, but there are those moments where, you know, are, is this kid really missing, or are they just a runaway kid? And in my in my instance, you know, my grandmother reported me as a runaway. I never ran away a day in my life. I was too scared, especially at the age of seventeen, and knowing, you know, the serial the killings were going on back then, the last thing in my mind was, you know, to be a runaway. Well, and here's what's so remarkable about, about you. At 17, such a young age, you had the wherewithal to move your, your uh, blindfold up a little bit and capture some of the details in the vehicle, like the make of the vehicle. That helped police to go out. No, a little different? Tell me. Let me explain that um, little... Uh... Thing with the blindfold it wasn't that i lifted my blindfold um you gotta understand i was you know tied bound by my wrists and my ankles um it was about when you take your fist and you tie a string around your fist and you tighten your fist as tight as you can tie the string and when you release your hand it, the string becomes loose um i decided to you know to try and tighten my jaw as he was tying the blindfold my on my or on my eyes and and that gave um a little leeway and, and it did actually in the end work and it made my blindfold loose and each and every time he took it off Amazing. and he put it back on i did the same you know diligent you know thinking and, and they had the capacity to make sure tighten your jaw tighten your jaw and make sure the blindfold is loose so i was able you know to gather information just in case i had survived this horrific horrific attack and it's that's so, where it's just so unbelievable. At 17, you, you thought of that. And then the other thing that was amazing is that you put fingerprints all over the place, everywhere you could, where you were being held at his warehouse, you know, uh, sadistic apartment. You were fingerprinting everything, knowing that at some point, at least they'll know, you know, I was here. Uh, just incredible. You, you know, there's a detail, Lisa, that um, I'm still trying to process. You sat front row at his execution just a couple years ago. I mean, 
how did you uh, how did you take that all in? How has that affected you? May twenty third, two thousand nineteen. Well, let's back up. April, I believe it was April 18th. Um, I had a being in this phone call um, from an area code 850, not thinking it was from Tallahassee, spam calls, right? So in the midst of, unfortunately, talking to a student, basically cheering them out for something they did wrong, I finally decided to answer this call. It was calling all day. I had it on a speakerphone, and when they said, um, uh, Hi, my name is Michelle Johnson from Tallahassee. Um, is this Lisa Nolan? And I said, yes, ma'am. It sounds like an important phone call. Um, she reached out to me, told me that uh, our governor, um, who I'm proud to stand by, uh, Ron DeSantis, had just signed the death warrant for Robert Joe Long. Uh, and my first instant response was, I started crying. And it wasn't crying of emotion of, Oh my gosh, it's over. I had closure a long time ago. It was about the day he was arrested, justice was served. To know now that he was going to be put to death, I knew justice would now be completed. And that was a big um, thing for me. Um, and my next question was, why haven't you called the victim's families first? Why are you calling me? Because I want the other victims to have, you know, the parents of their loved ones that they lost to be the first to no be notified because they deserve their closure. Uh, it's important to me to make sure everybody's aware that I forgave him a long time ago. I had to because it's helped me make, be the person I am today. Well, I, I can't tell you how happy we are um, talking and that you are the person you are today. And thank you for your service. And I'm going to wish you a very special Merry Christmas. And, and thanks for being on the show tonight, Lisa. I hope you'll be a regular viewer now. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Oh, ma'am's my mom. You can call me Ashley. Lisa, no. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.